Hey everyone, my name is World Top Opponent and welcome back to Minecraft. As you can see, I have uh, been doing a little bit of work making sure that I was ready to do my villager trading hall this episode. So right here is underneath our little entryway. Oh, it's nearly night time. <laughs> we have some more friends in boats again. And I wanted to make sure that before I started filming, I had got this entire setup sort of figured out because it took me a while to work out how I wanted to do it. I wasn't really following a tutorial. I just made it up. And so here we have... I, was, I did follow the tutorial for this uh, Village Breeder, which is Logical Geek Boy's Village Breeder. But this whole delivery system oop, and zombifying station was all my own design. I sort of came up with it all myself. So, if you'll see here, if I click this button, that dispenser up there fires. Now, right now, it has nothing in it. So, we have our restocking station. Where if I grab a minecart, now let me just make the make sure the rest of it is uh, all sorted first. So we have this block that blocks that off so that the uh, the cart will stop there in front of the zombie. And then when we're ready to move the zombies down here, I move the block and power the rail. And it'll launch it down and drop them into here. We can do three at a time, which means that with one potion, one splash potion, I should be able to heal three uh, villagers, which is efficient. <laughs> so we'll turn that off, pop the block in, and if we pop this, we'll see it pop up there. There it goes. And in a second, yep, yeah, there it was. It popped in. Now, if I hit this, launches that, picks up the villager, Takes it down to where our zombie is. And if I step back, he's focused on me at the moment. If I step back out of the way, there we go. And in just a moment, he'll become a zombie villager. Now, I'm going to leave him there because I don't want to clutter this up just yet. But what we can do is just release the, uh, the block and... Turn on the, the power rail, and he'll follow this rail system down across here and drop down into this position. Once they're cured, I can move in and bump the, the minecarts up over this area. And these are my three original villages that I have set up, ready to go. So this episode, I'm going to dig out a bit more of this area down here and decorate it into a functioning villager trading hall. We have our zombifying station ready to go with the villager breeder. So I can fill it up with any villages that I want. But I am going to need emeralds. Now I have built up a, a little supply from trading with these guys to get the experience. But one of the easiest ways to get a really big supply of emeralds is with farmer villages. And to trade with them, I need a melon and pumpkin farm. Which is where this area comes in handy. Because under here I have all the space that I need to make multiple automatic farms that are tucked away, running behind the scenes, and I can just ferry their items back wherever I want to over this island because I've got heaps of space. And uh, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build up an automatic melon and pumpkin farm. I'm going to send the items down underground and through a water stream all the way back into storage chests right over here. somewhere down in our area, possibly underneath the steps. So I might empty this out and, and put some storage chests underneath there. Eventually, once I rebuild the iron farm, I might also redirect the iron to this area as well, because trading iron with uh, villages is also a really good way to get big supply of emeralds. So I have prepared most of the stuff that I think I need to create this, uh, this automatic melon and pumpkin farm. I just need a couple of other little items and then we'll pop on over and get to building. So I'm going to quickly possibly open up this area here and make it up up on top of here just to still leave the area open down here. I think for a bigger mob farm and possibly my iron farm as well. 
So let's jump into a time lapse. <laughs> And welcome back. So, <laughs> as you can see over here, while I was building that melon and pumpkin farm, I think a zombie got in here and actually <laughs> re-zombified my original three villagers. So I'm going to have to cure them again as well as these people over here, but that's not too bad. I've sort of made this little track so that the, uh, as you can see, the melons and pumpkins pop up over here. So that's definitely, definitely churning out those items. And eventually I think any farms that create items over there, I might bring them over in that water stream and run them over a, like an item sorter system so that I can store them all. So we'll create a little area down here that we can store that in. As you can see, I'm actually popping into the, uh, the underside of my main building. So I think what I'm going to do is quickly pop back into that time lapse and I'm going to dig out a large area so that I have the space to set up my trading hall. So I just want to make sure that I have a good skeleton ready and then we can pop in and start designing and curing these villages. Okay, so I have now, not a detailed, but a basic outline of where I can put the villages. So I can bring, I can cure them, bring them down and start stacking them in all of these spots here. And I do have room above to add a second layer if I want more in the future. Uh, I'll probably go through and come up with a design of how I want to decorate this area. It will vary depending on, I think my storage room is just on the other side of that corner. So actually maybe I can pop up and have a look. Yeah, see it's just there. <laughs> so we're only one block away from there. I want to make sure I don't accidentally break into that area. But at least for now, what I'm going to start doing is Okay, I'm going to recure these guys and get them situated with their lecterns. And then I might make up these three into a couple of more uh, library villages, librarians, I should, I should say. And uh, grab a couple of other essential books like Silk Touch and maybe Infinity for bows. And then I'm just going to start the process of, of filling them in. Uh, curing and, <laughs> I suppose, zombifying and then curing villages, bring them down here. I'll kill them with this setup that I have here. So I've got plenty of potions. I'm probably going to have to go get a few more golden apples, but for now there's not 26 slots down there. So that's not necessarily a problem, but in the future, and we can set ourselves up with a, a really good, uh, 
villager trading hall. Good for XP, good for getting items that we want, and then I can start healing pickaxes and, and bits and pieces. I actually, I forgot to mention earlier, while I was building this, I destroyed my netherite pickaxe accidentally because I wasn't paying attention. So, you know, it happens. Sometimes you get into the zone and you're not watching the durability. But shouldn't be a problem when we have all these villagers to trade with and heal them up as easy as possible. Now, how many? Yep, so that is still working in the distance over there. Um, I don't think it's completely up and running yet, so oh, once that becomes, like, fully functional... We'll have a decent supply coming in here. Every time we're around the uh, the island, it's just going to be working away. And some of these villagers are going to be able to trade them for emeralds. Now, I'll probably set up, I think, a chest just here, maybe, for emerald blocks and emeralds to, to trade. And, yeah. I mean, enough talking about it. I suppose I should probably try and do it on camera and see whether I can do all three at once. I think I got them all. Yes. So once those three are sorted out, I'll use my rails and bring them down, start filling it in, and then might have to set up a temporary rail system to bring them over, and we'll start funneling them down, and yeah, exciting times. Another process in the, uh, the build of the base is underway. So give me... <laughs> Just a second for you guys, but probably a decent amount of time for me. And I'll pop back in once I've filled up that trading hall with freshly cured villagers. I figured it's only fitting that I bring you in for the last of it. Because just these two to go, and I've got my first layer of my trading hall set up. <laughs> it's taken me a bit of time. But uh, I sort of got into the groove of things, and I've worked out how to do it. Now I just need to block his path so he can't get out because of that trap door. If I turn on my hitboxes, he will take damage because he goes into the roof a little bit. But it doesn't count as him thinking that I damaged him, so it doesn't affect prices or anything like that. They don't all get angry at me. And I think my last two are going to be... Ooh, a bit of lag. These guys, weaponsmiths, I think they end up being. Now it's, I just slept, so it might take them a little bit to get set up, but I'll run you through what we've got so far. So these three are my original three villagers. This guy's with the mending, the protection, and the unbreaking three. Then I got this guy with the silk touch. I got this guy with infinity. And I think the Silk Touch, yeah, he got Power 4 as well. So I can combine the Infinity and Power 4 into a great bow. And then this guy with an Efficiency 4. And an Infinity. Oh, cool. I didn't even realize. So that's sort of like some basic but essential enchantments that I'll probably want to put on most equipment as I go along. Uh, if I keep, you know, making stockpiles of it. Then I have all of my farmers who most of them trade pumpkins and melons. Uh, and a couple of them have these golden carrots, so that's going to be fantastic as a food source. It's basically renewable. So all of those guys are much the same. I got two of these guys because uh, I wanted to get the Ocean Explorer map and the Woodland Explorer map. They actually both ended up with it. I didn't know whether that was a guarantee. But the glass trade, a lot of these guys over here trade glass really, uh, really cheap. So <laughs> we can make uh, glass panels out of that and trade for more emeralds. We have been building up a bit of a stockpile just from general trading to, to get to the point where we are. Ah, and there we go. So these guys are now... Yeah, he's ex a little bit expensive to get us started. So we might just refresh. Yeah. And these guys are used for an iron trade. So that's cheap, easy way to get emeralds. And I now have unlimited supply of diamond tools, diamond shovel, diamond axe, and uh, a diamond pickaxe. What enchantments did that have? Yeah, most of them will probably strip the enchantments off them and add our own, which is what those uh, librarian villages are for. But with these guys, I'm just going to quickly... Uh, 
make sure I've got the resources that are required and I'll trade them up to see what we get from them. And there it is. So these guys also have the iron trade and which one was it? This one's actually got a decent axe. So if we combine a couple of these axes together, we might legitimately get a decent axe enchanted already from that. So that's pretty cool. But basically these four are my, my main workhorses as far as trading iron goes. Um, the iron farm will make sure that we have plenty to trade with them. And then I think off camera, in between episodes, I'm probably going to add the second layer. I want to have like probably some armor smiths so we can get uh, diamond armor without having to go use our diamonds. I want to make some stone masons to get like quartz and, and different trades as far as that, bricks and whatnot. And then I'll just fill the others in with bits and pieces, maybe leave a few open for whatever I decide that I need to add later on down the line. But as you can see from the levels, uh, this is a good XP farm. It's an easy way for me to uh, fix my, my mending gear. And I also get all the stuff at the same time. So it's a win-win. And I feel like we're going to just end up with a monstrous supply of emeralds. So... Yeah, I'm really happy with this. It's not fancy, and I'll probably do some stuff to make the floor a little bit neater, and we'll definitely do a, a ceiling or something. I might pop it into a time lapse if I decide to do that in between episodes. Other than that, next we have to work out what to do with this area, and I do have some ideas, but I'll leave that also for another episode. Um, it may have something to do with the Endermen that are in our boats up top. <laughs> but with that, I think we're going to end the episode here. I've got myself this little trading hall set up and my melon and pumpkin farm and I'm going to work out while I set up this top section I'll make sure that I get this <laughs> this section here that's bringing in the melon and pumpkins hooked up to an automatic storage system so I'll chuck a, t a couple of chests down here and, and pretty that up as well. So in the next episode hopefully this whole area should be a lot prettier for you guys to see and then we can move on to Probably an automatic sh uh, sugar cane farm. So that'll be good. We'll get ourselves uh, set up to start having a good supply of rockets without having to worry about <laughs> doing too much. And yeah, we might make a nice little building around it at the same time and finish up some terraforming. So with that being said, I honestly, I've finished filming this after posting a video on TikTok. And if there's any of you who have rocked up here and have made it to the end, Honestly, <laughs> I appreciate you all so much. I was The support from TikTok and the amount of new subscribers that came in is honestly incredible. And I, I really don't know how to handle it, but hopefully I can keep posting stuff there and keep up the good work that I've been doing so far on this series. And more of you will come. I, I'm excited to see where we go from here. And I'm excited to put out more episodes for you guys. So... Again, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And honestly, thank you again. I really do mean that. Take care, everyone.